You are watching Maximus Aviation. Since the dawn of the U.S. space program, NASA knew that beyond building a big enough booster rocket capable of leaving Earth's gravity, or if the moon was made of Swiss or provolone cheese, there was one unified truth among rocket scientists the world over, and that was that as far as human space travel is concerned, everything in space is trying to kill you. So since the late 1950s, much effort and research has gone into astronaut life support systems to ensure their safety. And that research never stops. So recently, Johns Hopkins medicine researchers, in collaboration with NASA, sent human heart tissue on a chip specimens into space in an effort to monitor the tissue for changes in heart muscle cells mitochondria, which is their power supply, as well as their ability to beat or contract in low gravity conditions. So in a groundbreaking study, scientists from Johns Hopkins who arranged for 48 human bioengineered heart tissue samples to spend 30 days at the International Space Station have uncovered alarming effects of low or zero gravity on human heart tissue. The research reveals evidence that the low gravity conditions in space significantly weakened the tissues and disrupted their normal rhythmic beats when compared to samples of patients back on Earth taken from the same source. The scientists say that the heart tissues really don't fare well in space and over time the tissues aboard the space station beat about half as strongly as tissues from the same source kept on Earth. The findings published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences shed light on the potential health risks astronauts face during extended space missions. The study marks a crucial step in understanding the physiological changes of long-term space travel and may also have implications for heart health research back on Earth. Previous studies showed that some astronauts returned to Earth from outer space with age-related conditions, including heart muscle function and arrhythmias or irregular heartbeats, and that some but not all effects tend to dissipate over time after they return. However, in order to investigate the effects of microgravity on heart tissue, the research team led by Dr. Diok Ho Kim, a professor of biomedical engineering in medicine at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, sent 48 bioengineered heart tissue samples to the ISS. These samples were embedded in specially designed tissue chips, each about half the size of a cell phone. To create the cardiac payload, PhD scientist Jonathan Sui introduced human-induced pluripotent stem cells to develop into heart muscle cells called cardiomyocytes. This innovative approach allowed the scientists to study the effects of space conditions on human heart tissue without putting actual astronauts at risk. Dr. Sui, a key researcher on the project, explained the meticulous process of preparing the tissues for their journey to space. The first step, Sui said, was to place the tissues in a bioengineered miniaturized tissue chip that strings the tissues between two posts to collect data about how the tissues beat or contract. The cell's 3D housing was designed to mimic the environment of an adult human heart in a chamber about half the size of a cell phone. Sui said to get the tissues aboard the SpaceX CRS-20 mission, which launched in March of 2020 bound for the space station, he said he had to hand carry the tissue chambers on a plane to Florida and continue caring for the tissues for a month at the Kennedy Space Center. Once the tissues were on the space station, the scientists received real-time data for 10 seconds every 30 minutes about the cell's strength, contraction or beats known as twitch forces, as well as any irregular beating patterns. Astronaut and PhD Jennifer Meir played a crucial role in maintaining the experiment by changing the liquid nutrients surrounding the tissues once each week and preserved tissues at specific intervals for later gene readout and imaging analysis. The research team kept a set of cardiac tissues developed the same way on Earth, housed in the same type of chamber for comparison with tissues in space. When the tissue chambers returned to Earth, Sui continued to maintain and collect data from the tissues. An incredible amount of cutting-edge technology in the areas of stem cell and tissue engineering, biosensors and bioelectronics and microfabrication went into ensuring the viability of these tissues in space, Kim said, whose team developed the tissue chips for this project as well as subsequent chips. Devin Mayer, Ph.D., a former Ph.D. student in Kim's lab and now postdoctoral fellow at Johns Hopkins, then analyzed the tissue's ability to beat or contract. In addition to losing strength, the heart muscle tissues in space developed irregular beating disruptions or arrhythmias that can cause a human heart to fail. Normally, the time between one beat of cardiac tissue is about a second. 
However, in the tissues aboard the space station, that time grew to nearly five times longer than those on Earth, although the time between beats returned nearly to normal when the tissues were returned to Earth. In the tissues that went to space, the scientists also found that sarcomeres, the protein bundles in muscle cells that helped them contract, became shorter and more irregular, a hallmark of human heart disease. In addition, energy-producing mitochondria in the space-bound cells grew larger, rounder, and lost the characteristic folds that helped the cells use and produce energy. Finally, Yoon Hyun An, PhD and assistant research professor of biomedical engineering, and Jianping Dong, a Hopkins PhD student, studied the gene readout in the tissues housed in space and on Earth. The tissues at the space station showed increased gene production involved in inflammation and oxidative damage, also a hallmark of heart disease. These findings have significant implications for long-term space missions such as potential trips to Mars. The weakening of heart tissue and the development of arrhythmias could pose serious health risks for astronauts spending extended periods of time in space. Many of these markers of oxidative damage and inflammation are consistently demonstrated in post-flight checks of astronauts. The study also provides valuable insights into heart muscle aging and disease progression on Earth. The researchers are now exploring potential drug therapies that could protect heart cells from the effects of microgravity. These same drugs may help maintain heart function in aging populations on Earth. The study is ongoing according to the scientists. These same drugs may help people maintain heart function as they get older. The team is also investigating the effects of space radiation on heart tissues at the NASA Space Radiation Laboratory. The team said that as we continue to push the boundaries of space exploration, studies like this one are crucial in ensuring the health and safety of astronauts on long duration missions. Moreover, the insights gained from this research may lead to breakthroughs in treating heart disease and age-related cardiac issues on Earth. But what about the astronauts on the ISS? Are they in danger? Well, thankfully, the answer to that is no. Because unlike going to the moon or outer space or Mars, the space station is in low Earth orbit where the planet's magnetic field shields occupants from most of the effects of space radiation. Well, as far as we know anyway. Well, how about that? I wonder if they're going to put signs on the rockets that say warning. Space may be hazardous for your heart. Maybe not. But that's going to wrap it up for now. So please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, be sure to let me know what you think. Because I won't know until you let me know down below. And as always, until next time. Yeah, this is Maximus. Maximus.